Oh. Yeah. Oh. How many great sessions have we had back to back to back to back today? It's been amazing. Good morning. Um, all right, I'm excited. This is something that, um, this is one session, but this is like actually the most work went into this session. Uh, this session was going to be called the Click Funnel State of the Union Dress, something we do every single year to show you guys behind the scenes what's been, what we've been working on. Uh, not me, I don't know how to code, but what Todd and the team's been working on. And I'm excited because they've been killing themselves for you guys over the last year. As you guys know, a year ago, we hadn't launched Click Funnels 2.0. Then we launched it, and last year, a lot of people don't know what's been happening. And... Um, Last year we launched phase number one, and today we're going to be launching phase number two. You guys have some really cool goodies by the time the session's over for those who are in the room today, which is cool. But I need your help because Todd's going to talk about stuff and he's going to be excited, but I need you guys to like let him feel how excited you are. So as he's talking about stuff, like screaming, clapping, cheering is encouraged and exciting and it's going to make this even more fun. Does that sound, you guys can all do that for me? Okay, well, let's Love talk it. about the state of you. What's been happening? Absolutely, man. So this year has been insane, obviously. So it's been almost exactly 12 months, and we've done some crazy stuff. But before we get started, we actually made a huge change this year, too, and we brought on a new partner in the company. We acquired his business. He's actually been part of ClickFunnels 2.0 since the very beginning, the very inception of the idea. When we were out there meeting with Dave at the lake house, we, uh, we called this guy up and asked him if he'd be part of the project and planning it from the very start. And he just this year decided to come on board with us full time and help us run things. So I want to introduce to you guys Andrew Culver. He is our chief product architect. Yes. Um, <laughs> You guys are going to love Andrew. He's the best. Yes, he is, he is amazing. Um, so it's not just us marketer guys up here. Well, I've been doing software development a long time. Uh, Andrew has been doing it even longer, right? So he is the founder and builder of a framework that we actually built ClickFunnels 2.0 on top of. Lots of different software applications have been built on top of this. And we figured if we were going to find somebody to help us win this project, we should get the guy whose framework we're using to write software to help us build the product, right? So we brought him on board. He's also an entrepreneur, though, and a founder, just like you guys. He actually built a software app and sold it three years later, made an exit. Uh, he'll probably tell you guys a little bit about that story. Uh, but he also built software on the other end of the spectrum for the state of California, the largest government basically in the US beyond the federal government, right? So he built software for the state of California. He led that team. He built software for the Navy SEALs, actually training software for, I think it was SEAL Team 6, essentially, like really? one of the SEAL teams. So he built their training software and what they use. So similar to what Jocko was talking about the other day, he built software to help like streamline those exercises and stuff. So it's pretty cool. And he's the founder of tons of open source products. Uh, it actually turns out, funny little story, that the ClickFunnels Classic Stripe integration was built on top of his library that he built 10 years ago. So, so we've all, actually all been... All $10 billion in sales did. off ClickFunnels platform came through Andrew's work one way or the other, which yep. is crazy. Which is crazy, right? So with that, let's bring Andrew out, right? Let's give him a huge guys, round of applause! Can you guys get up and give him a hand of, a round of applause? I'm on Ooh. the edge of my seat, I'm on the cliffhanger. It's on the tip of my tongue and I can taste the answer. Heart beating out of my chest, ready to sit on your mind. This right here is my favorite part. <laughs> this right here is my favorite part. What's up, FHL? <laughs> Woo! Thanks for yes. having me on this stage. Obviously, it is a huge honor and a privilege to share the stage with Russell, with Todd. It is even more of a privilege and an honor to work with them every day. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. Well, we're excited to have you up here finally. You know, we've been doing a couple of years showing off some of the stuff that's been happening and you've been behind the scenes completely. So it's awesome to actually get you on stage with us. So do um, you want to introduce yourself a little bit? Absolutely. What some of the gaps I left? Perfect. So I am here because entrepreneurship changed my life, right? So when I sold my first company, it's years ago now, but when I sold that company, I took a break. Uh, we moved to Japan, we did a sabbatical, and we spent some time, I thought, with my wife and with our kids, what we wanted to do with our family. What was that next stage going to look like? And at the time, I couldn't have known where this was going. And that's kind of the thing when you're starting a business. You don't know necessarily what the shape of that business will be in the future. It's just important that you get started. And what I decided to do, I, I had had such a great experience building, launching a SaaS application, and I wanted to enable that for other people. And so Bullet Train really was my attempt to enable entrepreneurship for more people. But it's a developer tool. So the people that I was enabling that 
four were developers. What I couldn't have anticipated and what I am so happy for in the outcome of Bullet Train as a business is that it brought me to ClickFunnels because at ClickFunnels, I don't enable software developers. I enable entrepreneurs from every industry, every walk of life, and that is a level of impact so much larger than what I could do before. So thank you, everybody, for using our software, and thanks for having me. Thank you. That's awesome, man. You want to jump in and kind of introduce some of the, the numbers and things that have been happening this year and like talk about the team a little bit as yeah, well? Yeah, absolutely. So we have an incredible engineering staff. I am just one person uh, sort of as a representative for the engineers that work on our product. We have shipped so much code. We take the responsibility very seriously. The vision of ClickFunnels 2.0 is massive, right? And we knew this is going to take time and it's going to take effort. We roll features out as the most important features first, and then we work on them, we improve them, and the shape of that is 400,000 lines of code that we shipped in the last year. Yes, this is net lines of code, too. We actually, there were a million lines, but you know, we add and remove code. So after it's all said and done, 400,000 lines. Yep. <laughs> Crazy. The unit of work that developers use, uh, a, a bigger number here is better not just because it means a lot of velocity for the software that's being shipped, but it also means that you're thinking very iteratively, trying to get things out as quickly as possible so that people can use them and we can get feedback. So a unit of work for our engineering team uh, and, and our product experience team as a whole is a pull request. That's like, a, can you pull this into the app and, and deploy it out, to the, uh, you know, out into production is what we call it. And we have shipped 6,400 pull requests for you in the last year. 12 months, yes. <laughs> to get, and uh, I think one of the more exciting points here too that I didn't even think about before is probably only about a third of that has been seen by people in this room. So there's a lot of other stuff going on behind the I scenes. Today. I'll reveal the curtains a little bit and show you guys. Yeah, we'll get to it. So we've got 104 dev team members. I wanted to acknowledge each of them. Uh, we did something a little different this year, and, and I'm really excited about it. We invited out members of our engineering team, and they're not off in some staff room. You won't even know who they are until you meet them, because they're dressed just like you. We gave them attendee badges and embedded them with all of you. And some of you, I know, have had the opportunity to meet them and give them feedback and, and help them understand your businesses. But uh, we're really, really excited to have them, and I wanted to acknowledge all the hard work that they've done in this last year. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. <laughs> And it's not just engineers, it's also people that focus on the product and product support, some of the people you've interacted with, if you've had a customer support ticket. Um, it's our ops team, it's QA, all of those people. We're so grateful we have a great team. So let's keep moving. Absolutely. So this is a feature request board that we introduced a lot of you guys to last year. And I asked you, I said, we know we don't have everything you want yet in 2.0. Go tell us what you want. Here's where to go tell us. And you did. <laughs> we got a lot, <laughs> a lot of feedback over the past 12 months, which is amazing, right? So this board here, we have maybe the top 20 things that are on here right now that we're showing. And what we're going to try to do today during this presentation a little bit is to clean the board as much yeah. well as we can. So let's see what we can do here, guys. <laughs> All right, jumping into that. First thing we want to talk about is phase one. We introduced you guys to this last year. Phase one was how we broke up things. Last year, we gave you initial access to everything inside of phase one. And what I want to do real quick, because I don't have all the time in the world, is go through and kind of show you an overview of some of the things that I think are most important that you may have missed, but that you really need to know about that we've done since announcing phase one as improvements on phase one. Uh, and the first thing that I want to pull up, uh, well, let me, before I do that, let me take a step back and talk about 2.0 as a platform itself. I think I, I talked about this last year, and I want to reinforce it again, that what we were really doing, the reason why we partnered with Andrew on his bullet train framework, we actually were really trying to double down on building a platform for the next decade plus to, for you guys to run your business on. What we do know is that we don't know what five years from now looks like. And I think if anyone doubted that, AI over the past 12 months has made that blaringly obvious for everyone, that we don't know what's coming in five years from now, but we want our platform to enable us as developers <clears throat> and as team members to iterate fast. We want to be able to get in there, 
jump on the latest needs, jump on the latest trends, whatever you guys need to accomplish your goals in your business. We want to be there for you guys to support you. And that has been the primary focus since the beginning on ClickFunnels 2.0. So jumping straight in, we've got a new cool thing that Russell has actually been working on with the marketing team and with his designers. And you guys are actually going to get access to this immediately today, which is the new ClickFunnels 2.0 dashboard. Do you want to talk about it? This is like the one contribution I brought to the project. <laughs> so <laughs> not true. A lot of people were logging to ClickFunnels 2.0. They're like, it's so confusing. I can't figure it out. It's so much more complicated than 1.0. I'm like, first off, yes, we gave you way more stuff. But it's actually really simple. You click on the button that says funnels, and you create a funnel. And like, I don't know what kind of funnel to build. And so we build this really simple dashboard. You pop in, and you probably see some of it here, but it's like, what kind of funnel do you want to build? And it goes through all the core different funnel types that we talk about in the dot-com secrets book, in the funnel hacker cookbook. They're all in there. And you're like, I want this one right here. You click a button, and it takes you to a page like this, and there's a video of me teaching the strategy and the tactics on how to do that exact type of funnel. And then Ben Moot made a video showing you like, how to actually do it inside the app. So now, no one can say, like, I don't know how to build a book funnel because you click on the book funnel tab, you watch the video, you understand the strategy, the tactics, and then the video, and then you go and do it, and then we got a bunch of really cool templates underneath there. You click a button, it imports the whole thing, and you can rock and roll. So we did that for every core funnel type, so that way, building funnels, especially the core funnels we use, should be very, very fast and quick and intuitive. Ooh. So, yes. there you go. So tons of in-app training now for that. Yeah, oh. you can have it. <laughs> I think... Yes. ClickFunnels has never been just about a software. Yes. It's never been just about a platform. It's always been about those tools, plus coaching, plus education. And so it isn't just this dashboard. When Russell brought this, this to us, we made it a priority. But over the next year, there are so many pieces of this software that can use more Russell right in the app. And so that's what we're going to do. Yes, absolutely. I think that's been one of our big differentiators since the beginning, right? We embed Russell's teachings, the training, the marketing strategy right into the application. And I think one of the, I, I do want to actually point this out, the way this is actually built, everything you see there is actually inside the ClickFunnels editor. So we actually embedded the ClickFunnels editor pages. So Russell actually can go in himself into our ClickFunnels workspace, edit these pages, add videos, add share funnels links for you guys. Boom, they're live immediately inside the app. So we've really enabled it for him and the marketing team to, uh, to use it and you know, using our own application as much as possible. So it's amazing. And that is the dashboard. So next up, I just want to touch on a few random things that you guys have been begging for. Some of it was in classic, some of it wasn't. Some of it was, but we made it better. And uh, one of those things was root domain funnels. Uh, this one, you know, if you know what it is, you know what it is. If you don't, Sorry. Um, but <laughs> I mean, but, but basically, it. this is the idea that every funnel can be on a root domain. And in Classic, the way we actually did this is you would put it on the domain, but it would still redirect to a different path in your funnel. That's not the case now in 2.0. You can actually live on the root domain of your funnel for your opt-in page, for your order page, for whatever you're selling. So that is now live inside all of your accounts. Another huge area of the application is what we call the funnel hub, right? And Russell's got all kinds of training around what funnel hubs are, how they work, the way, best ways to optimize them. Uh, but I wanted to touch on a few things within the funnel hubs that we have updated over the past 12 months that you may have even missed. The first one is blog post UI. Turned out, some of you guys, including Russell, have hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of blog posts. And we wanted to optimize the experience of editing those, making it faster, making it easier to do. And we did that. Part of that is this new modal experience, where basically you can click on the post, pops right up. You can see the images. You can see the content that's embedded on the left. And you can see a preview of it on the right and how it actually interacts and uh, is visible to your customers. And you can backdate posts, schedule posts for the future, all of that fun stuff right inside of it. Uh, the customer center here enables all of your customers to actually upgrade, downgrade, cancel, pull their invoices, do whatever they need to do inside of an account management perspective. And if you haven't noticed, we use ClickFunnels to sell ClickFunnels. This customer center is what we also use for you guys. We use our own stuff here. One of the things that we just added for this, which I'm sure nobody's noticed yet, is we now have cancellation funnels built into your customer center. So, so good. I'll explain what that is for anyone that doesn't know. But basically, when someone clicks cancel, we're not just going to pop up a thing and say, OK, fine, cancel. Uh, we're going to actually run them through a survey or whatever you decide to build. Right? You can build whatever process you want for cancellation. You can ask them questions. You can survey them. You could say, OK, you're canceling because of cost. All right, great. Here's a downsell offer. Click here to downsell. Right? So that is all possible now inside of your customer center. I just want to point out. <laughs> 
Absolutely. There are entire businesses that have a software product that does just that feature, oh, yeah. and they're never going to have a funnel builder as strong as what we've got. So not only do you not need an integration to do that, but you'll have best of breed retention in your funnel. Like, it's amazing. Yes, I love that one. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we actually had tested this in the past, and I think we picked up 10% like, increase in net users after, after adding this. So it was awesome. You guys definitely will want to take advantage of that. Um, also, this, we did some updates to the customer center around the defaults. So some of you guys had struggled a little bit with the design and the elements that are possible inside of customer centers, because we do allow you to do anything you want inside of the ClickFunnels editor. So I've added a new default dashboard that's already designed for you, ready to go. If you want to use this default dashboard, all you got to do is go in and turn off the custom dashboard in your customer center settings. You'll see this. They can see enrollments. They can open their courses. They can see other available products that you're selling. To do that, you go to products. You check a box that says selling customer center. That's it, right? So that is now also live for all of you guys inside of ClickFunnels. <laughs> Can I point out why that's so cool too? Imagine you sell a course, somebody goes log in the course, they see the course they bought, and they see like three others like, oh, I want that one too, and they buy it, they buy it, they buy it. They don't have to go buy it, go through a funnel or anything, they just because they're an active customer, they see the other stuff, like you pick up tons of sales from that as well. So it's Yeah, and there absolutely are ways, without getting too technical, to actually make each of those products into its own funnel, which then they run through the funnel, they get the upsells, they get everything, and then they're dropped right back in the customer center where they were before to access their course. All that's possible now. Yeah. So cool. All right, page editor. This is Russell's favorite thing, so I, I <laughs> got a lot of slides. I'm gonna try to go through it quick, but also I don't wanna miss anything. So. <laughs> Uh, first up, I want to talk about page performance. Last year when we announced things, we showed you guys some page, page speed tests. All of our opt-in pages, what I would call static pages that didn't have dynamic content, are crazy fast, best in breed. But we did have some dynamic pages that we still wanted to work on. And as of two days ago, we actually have updated all of those dynamic pages to be as fast as all of the other pages, meaning your checkout pages, your upsell pages, your course pages, anything with dynamic content on it is now super fast. All you have to do, save your page, wait about 30 seconds for caching to kick in, and you'll see the performance. Nice. Yeah. <clears throat> so another piece of it that we kept seeing was, you know, you would get people that would complain that, oh, the page performance isn't great. And it turns out the YouTube player, the video player they were using was actually the cause of the problems. So what we did, and we use this ourselves, as you'll see on ClickFunnels, we use the Voomly video player, which we have focused on for the past year, optimizing the performance of and making it as fast as possible, reducing page speed uh, scores and making them as fast as possible, right? So now the Voomly editor is built right into the ClickFunnels editor. All you got to do is upload your video to Voomly, grab the URL, drop it in, and your video will be in there. And it'll decrease your page times just by doing that. Also, I just want to say on this, speed for us is an obsession. It really is. So if for any reason you're working on a funnel, working on a page, and you're not seeing the results that you expect, it could be one of those things. But what you should do is reach out to support and put it on our radar so that we can help you solve that problem. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of the other things we added, which is fairly simple but important, right? GDPR and compliance checkbox elements are now possible, so you can easily make it where someone applies a checkbox, they get tagged, you're able to segment them, only send them emails if they've opted in for the right processes. So if you're worried about it, compliance in Europe, et cetera, like now that's very easy to do inside the app. Um, and we've added a course ascension element, which Russell uses on every single one of his courses, so I'm yes. sure you've seen these, this element in action. Originally, it started as a custom code thing that Russell and his team had done. We turned it into an element inside the app for you guys, so you can just drop it right in, tweak a couple settings, make, the, make it look however you want right inside of the editor without any custom code. This is how, by the way, how I do level one, level two, level three continuity. It's all on one membership site, but it creates those little tabs up there on the left. It's level one, level two. And like he said, we used to custom code that. And then Todd's like, we should just build that for everybody. I was like, that would be amazing. <laughs> and now it's in there. So you can run all three levels of continuity in one membership site, which makes it so easy. And what's nice is someone sees level one, and they're like, what's level two? They click on it, and you can one-click upsell and unlock that form, and they automatically send to level two without you selling them or telling them or anything, because they see it every single day there inside the members area. Yes, it's awesome. Oh, yeah. Also, we added a new countdown element, which I can't wait to get into some more details about this in a little bit, but this one does everything and more that ClickFunnels Classic one does. Lots of cool styles and uh, some settings around it, which, again, I'll talk about more in just a little bit. Um, 
Also, we rebuilt this element, which is the step two element from Classic, and we've actually rebuilt it three times, but I will also talk more about that here in just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> um, and follow-up funnels. We've done a ton of updates to the marketing automation side of ClickFunnels and the workflows. So, Andrew, do you want to touch on this? And I absolutely this? will, awesome. because and the reason Todd turns this over to me, from the beginning when I you know, typed new project for ClickFunnels 2.0, this has been a passion project for me. Um, this is follow-up funnels, these workflow automations, uh, as you'll see them labeled in the app, this is so critically important. Um, we, so first of all, we've got all kinds of steps that you can go in here and you know, add different things that you can do in a workflow automation in your follow-up funnels. But the reason this is so important is it enables you to extend the platform in ways that normally would be us as developers would have to like write this logic or whatever. Now you can go in there and have an idea for how you think a particular workflow should go or how an interaction with your customers should be, and you can build it. In, in the broader industry, there's a, a, a word for this type of tool. They're called no-code tools, right? So you think of you know, all the different no-code platforms out there. And the way that this feature is architected, it really was a pet project for me. And it is ar architected to effectively, over time, this will evolve to be a Turing complete. That's programmer jargon. But it's a Turing complete workflow builder, which means like it can do all the same stuff you can do in a programming language, and we'll get there. And so this is a huge goal for us, and we're doing it step by step. But yeah, so let's talk about what we've got. You've got a whole bunch of integrations now that are enabled in your follow-up funnels. So this is massive, right? Because you've got, there's so much that we do. The product is so broad. But we can't do everything for every industry, right? And so by having all of these integrations to tap into other platforms, it means that you don't have to live at the limits of our platform. You can integrate with anybody that you need to. And we'll talk more about that later. So we've got all of these new steps. Todd, do you want to talk about those? Yeah, absolutely. So um, one more thing on the integration piece that came up previously is like, we do add this now as a separate thing outside of your pages. Your pages are not directly tied to third-party integrations. That's very intentional, because in Classic, we actually had no flexibility necessarily around how those things interacted. So in this one, you're able to determine, are you going to trigger this integration on page view, on opt-in, on opt-in, but only if they checked a certain box? Like All that flexibility is actually possible inside of these workflows. And it's only a couple extra steps that you, that you have to click in order to enable any of that functionality that Andrew's alluding to there. So um, the different steps that we've added this year, we've added a number of them, and I'm going to talk about some more in a little bit too. But uh, you can enroll people in courses, uh, specific modules of courses, as Russell was mentioning. You can enroll them up the grade, down the grade, their stages. You can unenroll them. You can notify your sales team or different email addresses with different information when things happen. You can send webhooks to third-party systems. Uh, you can do third-party integrations, which we just showed you. You can send assets to people, such as PDFs or downloads or whatever. You can send those things. And those assets actually, this is another cool thing, they actually show up inside of your customer center for your person as well. So if somebody opts in for a download, they'll get the download, but they also are pushed into your customer center. Will they receive your other products? and your other Ascension stuff, and their other courses that they bought from you. So it's all in one nice place there. The conditional goals actually are probably my favorite feature of workflows that nobody uses. Um, <laughs> yes, somebody uses. Uh, so conditional goals, which conceptually they sound a little, a little complex at first, but it, it makes it really easy to do something like an abandoned cart. So you can trigger something where it says, OK, when they opt in, start this abandoned cart sequence. And then at the bottom, you put a conditional goal of they bought the thing. What that does is as soon as they buy the thing during that sequence, they drop to here. You no longer have to do branching and all kinds of complex strategies to accomplish this. You just add a conditional goal. And you can use this for a, probably an infinite number of use cases, but that's just one example that makes it super easy with these new steps. That's awesome. Thanks. We got email editor updates for you guys, too. Uh, you may notice we actually now have, just as of a week or two ago, rolled out autosave in the email editor, so you won't have to worry about losing your updates. Easy to send test emails and edit your emails right there. We added a bunch of new templates from Russell. All the things that we see Russell do, we grab, we turn into templates for you guys, right? So if he's doing it, we're making it a template that's easy for you guys just to do as well. Um, smart sending, you want to talk about this one? 
Absolutely. So uh, I actually built this feature, I think, yeah. myself. It's the early days uh, was the inception of this idea. But the, so with, with follow-up funnels, the, when you're sending emails in huge batches, what you do not want to do is drop 100,000 messages on the individual providers at a given time. There's a bunch of reasons for this, right? Um, but w one of the reasons, one of the reasons is you start getting feedback from people on the email that you've sent. And in the email you sent, you broke a link, or you said something wrong, or there's a typo in your headline, and somebody points it out to you. Uh, it, it's a good thing that you're sending in batches to a large group of people so you have the opportunity to you know, fix things like that. Yeah, this definitely increases email deliverability, too, as, as Andrew was mentioning there. Um, what, what you'll run into is if you send 100,000 emails as a relatively new domain to some, something like Gmail, what Gmail will do is say, whoa, we don't know if this email's good or not. And they will just automatically block everything after the first, say, 10,000, right? So they'll only let 10,000 through, and they just block the rest. But if you just send them 10,000, let them see that it's not a bunch of spam, send them another 10,000, another 10,000, they let it all go through consistently. So that's definitely, until you build up a good reputation on a domain, using this to send, a, send your emails out in a batch of, right here we show one hour, but I would recommend on a new domain to do more like six hours. If you do that, you will get way better deliverability and open rates. So we, we put this power in your hands. We give you the option. We're not forcing you, but we give you the option to actually have better deliverability by doing this. Cool. One last thing I've just got to say before we leave this slide, because you, you, yeah. Todd and I both code, right? We love writing code. And so you'll hear me say things like, oh, I worked on that, or uh, yeah, that's my, that's my baby. And the reality is like, yeah, there's a seed of truth to that, but I do not want to uh, leave anybody with the impression that I built these things myself. Joe Fensler, he's in the audience here, he's attending. I just want to say, Joe and your team, you have a whole team that works with you, uh, you really picked up what I was putting down with the automations and the idea of a no-code platform. That team has done an incredible job over the last year. Thank you for making that available to all the people that you see here. Awesome. Next up, Membership Sites 2.0. And this one, I'm actually going to talk about a few things that you guys are going to get access to today. So yeah. first off, this is Russell, one of Russell's membership areas. I'm sure you guys are all parts of at least one of them. Um, and you see the navigation element on the left that he's talked about, the one that we've built in already and I brought up just a minute ago. But you can also see just all the customizations, all the cool stuff that he's enabled here and done. Um, we understand that it's a little complex sometimes to build that, right? Like, there's a lot that goes into building an awesome membership area <clears throat> from using different elements and setting things up different ways. So what we've recently done is trying to simplify this for you guys. First off, with a new wizard for courses that basically gives you different structures to pick from from the courses, gives you different templates to select from, lets you link products all within, what is this, five different screens, four different screens that you're able to click through. And at the end, you'll have your course live, connected to a paid product if that's your goal, and, uh, and have your course ready to go. So after you do that, you'll be dropped on a new dashboard, which it's pretty simple here, but I just I want to touch on a few little things. You'll notice that this one, for example, starts as a free course. There's a button next to it that says convert to paid course. You do that, you link a paid product, that's it, right? So you can easily create a free course and give that to people very fast, very easy, uh, and then give them a course URL to sign up from, just like you could in Classic, that would allow anyone to sign up that you send that to if you've got a course that you're trying to give away to people. Or you can use the workflow steps to enroll people when they opt in, when they do whatever. It would just drag a step on that says enroll to a course, pick the course or the modules inside of a course that you want to give them access to for free. So a cool thing with this is you could say, oh, I'm going to give them access to module one for free when they opt in. And then I'm going to be trying to upsell them the, the pro plan or the platinum plan or whatever of my course. And you can do that inside of it. So you can have a hybrid course where parts of it are free and parts of it are paid. And this dashboard just kind of makes it much easier now to see your linked products that are actually being uh, connected to those different modules and how they're connected. Uh, and then the outline. 
Uh, the other piece of this that Russell really wanted, and I, I went back to the drawing board on this and brought back what we created in ClickFunnels Classic, we brought back a modal experience that makes this really fast and easy to edit large courses. Um, instead of jumping into a more, more large editor experience, I guess, for lack of a better phrase, uh, we popped this up right, right inside. You can see on the left-hand side, you know, title, description, any media elements that are embedded, such as uh, videos or audio files. And then on the right-hand side, you can see a preview. Uh, one important thing probably to touch on here is all of your lessons need to have what's called a course video element if you're including course videos in it, right? So that's going to use not a YouTube link or a Voomly link or whatever. It's going to use a secure embed of the content you uploaded so no one can just share the link. That's very important, and that's why it's a very different element than the normal video element that you might use when you're embedding YouTube or Voomly or whatever. We have a course video element, which is a secure one, meaning if you're not logged in, if you share the link, if you do whatever, no one can get access to this content. And uh, I just wanted to make that clear because we'd had some confusion around that, so I wanted to make sure that's, that's a feature, not a bug. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and if you did want to make a free course with YouTube videos, you can still do it, right? Just drop that other element on there. Um, so that is Membership Sites 2.0, and you guys will have access to all those things in there that I talked about that you don't see yet. You'll see them later today. Yeah. Good. I want to quickly touch on analytics as well, because this is a critical part of everyone in here's business, obviously, including ourselves. We use our own platform. We use our own analytics. We are constantly working on this. Um, one of the important things that I wanted to at least bring up is I love this view personally. I know this may not be valuable in a business our size <laughs> necessarily all the time, but this is a great thing if you have a few leads coming in on a daily basis, a few sales coming in, whatever. You can jump in here. You can see all the different events that are coming through. And I recently added to this the ability to see things like tagging, course enrollments, all kinds of of more micro movements within your funnel. So you can actually go in here and watch what people are doing in real time. See that they landed on your opt-in page. They got lost here. They got confused here. They never joined over here. You can actually go through and actually play with this and filter down by the different types of events. So I think that's a cool, cool extra feature that we added in there for you guys. Um, uh, advanced Analytics Dashboard, we updated the performance on this, made it a lot faster, a lot easier to use. Um, you're going to see a lot more updates coming to this this year as well. We're constantly working on analytics right now. Uh, but I did want to at least point out that you can filter by anything you would possibly want to filter by here, by products, by funnels, uh, by order, volume, all the things. So you can get in here and really dial in and see all the details that you might want to see. Um, we also have advanced analytics now inside of your funnel builder. We talked about this a little bit last year, and we did have it there. But we actually have now rolled out things like UTM filtering, um, different device filtering filters. So you can actually go in and say, oh, I just want to see my Facebook ads. I want to see this campaign ID. I want to see whatever. And filter all of your funnel's analytics by that specific UTM. And probably my personal favorite out of all of this is uh, inside the analytics inside of funnel, you can click on numbers, such as right here. I'm clicking the number of opt-ins. I click the number of opt-ins, and it actually takes me to a filtered view of all those contacts that match the date range, the UTM filter, whatever I'm filtering by on, on the left, I will see all those exact people. So I can know exactly who's behind it. I can know my analytics are right. I can drill into it and verify it. I can understand what I'm looking at in better depth. So that's one of my favorite features there. And before we move on from analytics, I know I've got a lot of people that have been waiting for this one. So uh, we are now going live with the Meta Facebook Conversion API integration. Uh, we've been working hard to make sure this is perfect, because I like when you're dealing with your ads and your marketing dollars, I don't want to leave any room for mistakes. So we've been testing this. We've been using it. We've had beta testers using it. And we've got it dialed in. It tracks trials. It tracks subscriptions. It tracks revenue. It tracks leads. It tracks everything that Facebook will let us track across your entire funnel and across your entire funnel hub, actually, so every single funnel. So for example, I can see that my Facebook ad selling Russell's book made so much money, and then the guy comes over here, buys the coaching program over here, and I can actually see that revenue across all of my funnels, which I think is a critical, critical piece that everyone has been missing without really expensive third-party tooling to get that kind of insights. So now that is built right in. So if you're using Facebook, you're driving traffic there, uh, you can get all of that data and all of that life cycle the customer push back to your Facebook ad and know how much money that ad actually made. <laughs> so cool. The 
The thing I love about all of the analytics stuff, even that one tool where it's, uh, you're, you're looking at like a real-time feed of activity that's happening, and obviously we can't look at that on our own dashboard because of the volume, but it's not about us. It's about people who are starting businesses or looking at a new opportunity and getting that feedback, whether it's the metrics or the real-time line, like the real-time timeline, where you're seeing that, it's, it's a signal that something's working. So you can see, oh, this is working. I'm going to invest in it. Or uh, inversely, uh, maybe I need to make a tweak. That's where they're dropping off or whatever. So uh, yeah. those tools are super, super valuable. Absolutely. Um, one of the other things I want to jump into that was the last part of phase one we talked about last year is payments AI. So again, Oh, awesome. Uh, I, we built this for ourselves. Like, we wanted a better payment solution. Uh, not to throw too many rocks at the other guys, but we wanted better control. Too many stories from you guys of being shut down, being uh, cut off, losing your businesses, having to start over. We've heard all of it. Like, this room, you'd be surprised how many people have had struggles with payment processing over the years. So we built something. Um, the best way I like to explain this, which sounds complex, is payment orchestration. So the idea is that, like, we will host all of your, we'll keep your credit cards, we'll keep all your payment info, all your products, everything vaulted and ready to go. And if for some reason you need to change gateways, Stripe kicks you off for whatever reason, you just plug in another gateway and you keep processing. Your recurring payments keep going through. Everything keeps going through consistently. So this is one of the most important reasons why, why we built this. And I want to talk more about some of the other things around it. Um, if you haven't used it yet, we actually have simplified the onboarding. We got some feedback around just the cumbersomeness of some of the process of I got to send over my paperwork a certain way. We've simplified all that, so it's very easy to actually onboard now, get your business set up. You just go click the payments button, fill in your business info, and you're pretty much good to go. Um, next up, we have a PayPal partnership finally. And this, this is a big deal. This is actually something that we never achieved with ClickFunnels Classic, but Payments AI was actually able to achieve this with PayPal because of how it was built and positioned. Um, what this allows you to do, if you've ever tried to do uh, what they call reference transactions, basically if you want to do recurring payments, one-click upsells, any of this with PayPal, it's a big ordeal. You got to get on the phone with PayPal, you got to go through their compliance department, it can take weeks and you have to, it's, it's a lot. Um, now because of this partnership, you just click integrate PayPal and you're approved for all of that because of Payments AI's partnership with PayPal. So cool. All right, and the one elephant in the room with anything payments related, fees. So I'm gonna talk through fees real quick on Payments AI because I think there is so much misunderstanding and so much misinformation coming maybe from some competitors around this. Uh, I wanna point out what it actually costs. So Payments AI here on the left, 2.9% 30 basis points standard processing fees. That's basically Visa and MasterCard fees, right? Like that's going to, to them to process the payments and do all this stuff. We charge as Payments AI 50 basis points to handle all of your subscription billing, all of your checkout, invoices, taxes, revenue recognition, gateway routing, uh, dunny, advanced dunning rules, AI conversions, all the things we do. One fee, one very flat, obvious, transparent fee that we actually send you an invoice for. We don't just secretly take it out of all your payments, as you'll see here in a second when I talk about how the other guys do it. If you look at what Stripe does, they also charge 2.9 and 30, same thing, Visa and MasterCard, but then they also charge 50 basic points for billing. That's equal with us. Then they charge 40 basis points for checkout, 40 basis points for invoices, 50 basis points for taxes, 25 for revenue recognition. They don't let you customize. They can't do gateway routing because they are the gateway. They only have three banks or so that they partner with, whereas we have any gateway out there that we can basically add inside for you guys. Uh, and advanced dunning rules that you can customize and you can kind of do like, actually Andrew's first company he sold was Churnbuster. This is what they did. They did advanced dunning rules. That's just built into Payments AI for free. It's included with you guys. Uh, and AI conversions, which we are actually doing, I won't get into all the details of that right now, but inside of Payments AI, or you can talk to the guys at the booth, there's all kinds of cool things we're doing with AI, and that's where the name Payments AI comes from, right? That's the future for this, is that we want to use AI to optimize your routing of your payments, your backup gateways. We're seeing, I think Tyler tells me, somewhere around 10 to 15% pickup by just introducing a backup gateway and using the AI, as in you make 10% more sells by just plugging in the backup gateway and turning this on. Can I explain that real quick? I want to make sure everyone gets that. Yeah. So because payment.ai vaults your credit card, it's stored at payments.ai. So let's say you bill, you're a recurring uh, revenue business, right? And you try to bill off your Stripe and the Stripe declines saying, oh, for whatever reason, Stripe declines. You say, okay, well, if declines on Stripe, try it over here on this merchant account. You try a different merchant account and the second time it'll go through. 
The reason why, I have no idea. Like I said, 10, 15, 20% increase in revenue because it says, oh, failed, failed, try a different bank account, different merchant account, and all of a sudden it goes through and you're back to good. Like this is a couple of things. Number one, this will make you more money than almost anything we've given you guys using Payments AI. And people the last year like, we can't do it, it's too expensive. It's like, it's literally cheaper than just going directly to Stripe just because they hide the fees and we're like, here's the fee up front. So like, this is like the greatest gift we could possibly give you guys and people keep missing it. It's like, don't miss it. This is a really, really, really big deal. So. Yeah, it, it really is. And, and that routing stuff that you're touching on there, I mean, like, it's, it kind of, it seems confusing, but it's really not even. I mean, like, somebody in Manila is buying your product. Wells Fargo and Stripe, that's who that is, they don't necessarily trust people from Manila, right? But you might have a bank in Manila that you're able to use with, with Payments AI. They trust it. It goes through fine. They got, you know, 80% exception rates, whereas Wells Fargo has 20% for, for that country, right, or that city. So anyway, that's kind of that's the idea behind it. Uh, and to just give you another quick breakdown, just to show you how Payments AI with Stripe together work, right, because that's another scenario that some of you guys are like, you're like, that's fine, but I also want to use Stripe because it's in my other businesses or whatever, right? Like, okay, or I suggest use Payments AI with Stripe as a backup, but what you can do, and if you look at this, I break it down again, we charge 1.5% billing when you're using Stripe because you're not going through our platform, so we have to cost and stuff for them. Um, the net out, comes out to 4.4%, whereas if you just went to Stripe directly, it's 4.95%. Right? So if you're using all these building features and doing all this, so that just breaks down real quick. For every nine, $9.97 product you sell, Payments AI, $34 in fees. Payments AI with Stripe, $44 in fees. Stripe only is $49 in fees. That's more expensive. Like, so meaning for every two comic club award you make, you donated 15 grand to Stripe. <laughs> like, maybe you donate that to Village Impact instead. Right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> build a school. That's awesome. <laughs> so... Payments AI plus Stripe is cheaper than just Stripe, and Payments AI is even cheaper. And to sweeten the pot, because we're on stage and we're a marketing company, I had to do some kind of offer for you guys. So what I'm going to do, I talked to Tyler before this, and what we're going to do is waive all of our pro billing fees anyway for you guys on the first $50,000 in processing you do, as long as you just sign up while you're here during the event. So go Very sign up, log in, payments, go visit the booth. They'll credit your account and uh, make sure you have it ready to go so you get that credit. You guys okay if we over-deliver? You guys cool with that? <laughs> Okay, just making sure. Cause, okay. Because <laughs> so far, that's just phase one from last year. We haven't even talked about phase number two at all yet. No, we haven't. So I think we're going long. So I hope you guys are hungry. <laughs> Hopefully you hang out with us. Um, so phase two. How are we doing on time? Uh, that, that's, okay. a lot, that's a lot of new icons. Like, um, this is more icons than uh, we originally talked about last year. So <laughs> we're trying to go through it fast for you guys. But, uh, but yeah, sorry. Bear with me here. Um, first up. Store funnels. We talked about this last year. We told you guys that e-commerce type features were coming. One of the things you guys want to do as part of e-commerce more than anything else, or a lot of you guys do, I think 36% of you, if my survey numbers are right, want to do physical products, right? So physical products. Physical products including inventory management, shipping labels, fulfillment, taxes, manual orders, all the things. Yes, yes, that's what we're doing. We, we've been working hard on physical products, and I'll talk to you more about how you get access to it here in a little bit. But uh, store funnels, product collections, product collections are now live. If you're not familiar with that terminology, the general idea is I have a category in my store. It lists all the products in that category. You're able to do products based on either manually adding things, tagging them, price point, uh, keywords, whatever you want. You can make all kinds of dynamic product collections inside of your store. So there is now a storefront to your store. There are collection pages and collection templates. There's product templates, so you can customize. Every product can have its own template. Every product can be its own funnel. Again, I'm going fast, but we're going to go through all kinds of details with this for you guys in the, in the weeks coming up, too. So that is uh, the basic overview of how product collections work. Uh, the quick setup that you're going to see for like a physical product going forward, uh, you guys have probably seen this with digital products already. But you basically go in, you create a digital product, you add your variants, you add your price points. Your variants would be something like t-shirt size, color, um, Plan access. We use, we use variants all the time in our own digital products. But uh, so you just quickly set that up, determine what categories or collections the product falls into, uh, and then you set up your shipping zones and rates. So if you're using, if you want to use dynamic rate calculations, you want UPS, USPS, FedEx to give you rates and to be able to present those to your customers in real time, that is all possible. You can put markups on it, or you can create your own fixed rates, right? So we do this often when we'll do a 7% flat rate for shipping. We do that intentionally. That's possible. Or you have the option of doing dynamic rates in shipping zones. <laughs> I know. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Um, now, this is the coolest thing, right? This is the major differentiator between anything else out there. Every product inside of a ClickFunnels 
store funnel is a funnel. And I want to explain how that works. There's two options. First off, you can actually set for a product in the settings. When someone goes to this in the store, redirect them to a funnel, right? So our .com secrets book will be in the store. You'll click the book. It'll just go to the .com secrets book funnel. It won't be in a store type checkout experience. But what we will do is if you, have, uh, if you set up rules behind the scenes, we call them store funnels inside of the app, you can basically say anytime someone buys a book, this is the upsell path that they should go through, right? Anytime someone buys something in this category, this is the upsell path they should go through. So every single product can have a follow-up funnel behind, not a follow-up funnel, have a funnel behind it to follow up after the initial checkout experience. And that's all built in, super easy to configure and prioritize the ratings and rules uh, right there inside of store funnels. Very cool. <laughs> that's store funnels. Um, whew, all right, so next up, Sales pipelines. Do you need to catch your breath? I, I, I'm good. I'm good. Well, <laughs> I need a water. But, uh, sales pipelines. So sales pipelines, again, I think I've held you guys for a while, so I'm going to keep going. But sales pipelines are basically a way that you can actually run people through different phases. And it's a different view that people can go through and actually see uh, their, their leads coming in, right? Like, do you want to talk about that some? Let's yeah, talk. absolutely. Yeah. So uh, there's, a few, there's a few different pieces to this. So... Um, it, it, the whole observability piece that I was talking about before, being able to see where people are, this is table stakes, right? So being able to have an opportunity, um, identify it, see as it's progressing, and, and just know whether something is working well or whether a lot of people are getting stuck at a particular point. You might even, and, and this is a super important thing, it, it's one thing to automate a business that's operating at scale, but in the early days, it's really nice to be able to reach out individually to people and figure out why are they getting stuck at that point? The He's in water. You're good. Oh, water. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that, that's what you can do with Sales Pipeline. This is basically a different view for the things that the platform was already doing for you. So um, there's all types of stuff that you can do with this. You have workflow automations that can put people into different groups, move them along those groups. But there's more. So Sales Pipeline, in my opinion, uh, this is something I've built, you know, in, in previous uh, businesses. It's a very common feature. It's like a core thing that you talk about in software development, the CRM, right? And that's fine, but when you are operating a business and you are trying to inject capital into that business, you may identify that, like, hey, I have this off-the-shelf product that I can provide at this price point, but there's a customer, every once in a while I run into a customer who I can provide value to at this price point, right? But does this customer convert like this customer? Not necessarily, right? Sometimes it's a higher touch sales process that's required in order to get that into your business, to serve that customer and get that revenue into your business so that you can continue growing. And for that, it's helpful to be able to schedule appointments. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so I'm going to go through and just show you guys off this. I'm excited about this. This is a very cool feature that's now built in to ClickFunnels 2.0. You have the ability to sync your calendar, whether it's, whether it's Google or iCloud or Microsoft. You can sync your calendars inside of ClickFunnels, create availability schedules, set up uh, landing pages to actually schedule appointments with your clients, push them in, move them from lead to appointment scheduled to closed, right? Like move them through your Ascension pipeline of your CRM, right? So inside, you'll see that you can easily connect to any of these different inboxes, uh, any of these different calendaring platforms, uh, create different types of calendars, all this inside for your team. Your entire team has their own calendars, can set it up. You can set up different types of events, such as one-on-one -on -one events or round-robin events, for guys like us that have lots of guys on the sales team, you can round robin the leads through it. You can even do all kinds of crazy advanced settings I won't get into too much, but you can do staff selection so people can pick if you want to allow them to pick. You can do buffers, you can do uh, different times, time requirements and settings. All the things you would possibly want to be able to do for event type appointments in our industry are all now possible inside of appointments. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> We've created a, what I believe is a beautiful scheduling page where it allows you to customize it, put your logo on it, put details around it, let people schedule, pick appointment times, just like you would expect from a calendaring system, all right side of it, right inside of it. One of the coolest things I think too is we actually integrated payments as well. So if you want to sell a product so you can require a payment for your intro session or your application or whatever, right there in front. So you can apply the payment and uh, require that before it'll let them finalize the appointment. And that is appointments. Yeah. It's huge. And I heard a thank you, Todd. That's actually accurate. This was his brainchild big time. <laughs> but I also want to acknowledge another engineer that was here, Daniel Pence. Buddy, you took that thing and ran with it, and you yeah. did an incredible job. I can't wait for y'all to, to use it because it is a super smooth, super polished experience. And that was the effort of Daniel Pence and the team that you work with. Thank you so much, Daniel. Yeah. Awesome, Andrew. You, you got to take this one. You got to go through the developer API webhooks. This is a, awesome. I your forgot baby. where I was. <laughs> this is definitely my slide. Um, oh, this, is, this is super important to me. Um, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on it, but I just want you to understand how important it is to us that you are never locked in that you are never in a situation where because you chose our platform, there's, some, there's something that you don't know that's out there that like, it's gonna be a barrier that you hit. Uh, and, and all of a sudden you're gonna have a last mile issue where you can't do this or do that on ClickFunnels as a platform. I spoke to Todd about this from the very, very early days, that we were going to build this application in a special way. And it has taken time to get this right, but the ability to expose to you a developer API and outgoing webhooks. So API is, you're asking us for information. Webhooks is, we're telling you that something happened. By enabling these two tools, we are allowing you to build and grow your business on ClickFunnels. We do so much for you. But when you get to the edge, when you get to the industry-specific thing that you need to do, as your business grows and you have that revenue to hire a developer or work with somebody, or you are a developer, you'll have the ability to use a developer API to access all of your information, and that's the goal. It's not a little surface area. We are getting started today, but our goal is that anything you can do in the UI, somebody can build a tool that does it via API. You will have the opportunity to identify op the things in your business that you can build. You can hire a developer to go do it, and it's, that's not enough for us. It's not enough that it's just in your business. I want you to do like what I did with Churnbuster. I was using Stripe, our business was losing a huge amount of revenue to churn, and I just built a tool. And I want you to be able to do that with your experience on ClickFunnels, to be able to build a tool and then flip it. And software businesses have such great margins. So you may have the opportunity to, in addition to the business that you're running, to identify software products that you can build for ClickFunnels, and that's what we're aiming to do. Ooh. <clears throat> We have best of breed developer documentation. We have outgoing webhooks. We have a surface area that we're starting on and we're rolling this out area by area throughout the application. So if there's an area that you would like API access for, let us know and we can prioritize it accordingly. We also have the ability to use outgoing webhooks as a catch-all for automation in our workflows. So in a workflow, you can send an external webhook to literally anywhere. And so even without building a custom integration, you can use no-code platforms. And I want to talk about that a little bit, because we've, we've talked about a developer API. We've talked about webhooks. We've talked about the extendability of, of the platform to do anything that you need to do. But there's a certain amount of privilege that comes with being a software developer, right? And we can do anything. It's a magic skill set. Definitely, that's what we pitch to the kids and, and tell them to pursue this. It's a great opportunity. But 
there's so many people out there that don't know how to do software development, and that's totally fine, because we have an entire new class of tools and platforms that we can integrate with. And so in terms of integrations, yes, we have our first party integrations, but I want to touch on one specific integration that we're releasing today that enables non-developers to do serious developer things, and that is Zapier. Ooh. I'm a developer and I love Zapier. <laughs> it's not Zapier, it's Zapier. Their, their uh, marketing department wants me to tell you it rhymes with happier. And that's true. <laughs> so the point is, and, and we're not even close to done with this thing yet. We're just getting started, right? But you have all these triggers in Zapier that you can connect to your account. You can go and create a Zap. You can uh, set up a trigger from ClickFunnels 2.0. You can have things like uh, a contact was identified or an order was completed or a, a subscription was paid. And you can unlock that to like 5,000 things that Zapier integrates with, right? So really, this is the final frontier of integrations, right? So you do that, you also have the ability to go the other way. Something happens on another platform and we have a uh, action where you can create or update that contact in your ClickFunnels account. I want to hear from whoever's using this what you want us to add next. Oh, I mean, you could shout it out right now, too. But, uh, the, uh, so that's it. You, uh, you create your integrations, and they, uh, it's an incredible platform. Please use it. Give us feedback. We're looking forward to hearing from you. And that's integrations. Cool. <laughs> yes, that has been the number one thing on the feedback board for a very long time. And that's <laughs> awesome to be able to handle that today. Um, so one of my uh, kind of pet projects, you mentioned that other one was a pet project of mine. This one also has been near and dear to my heart. Thank you, Joe, as well, for helping the, this finished and uh, the rest of the team. So countdown funnels have been something we've used as a strategy for a long time. Do you want to explain like, what a countdown funnel is from a high-level marketing side of things? And then I'll kind of show how you, you set it up. Yeah, for sure. If you do an automated <clears throat> webinar or something, right? Someone registers for a webinar, and you've got a beginning and an end of the campaign. You want the campaign to end. And so... You know, there's other third-party services we use in the past. We have to hack to plug together to be able to do um, deadlines and get people like, you know, email sequences where emails got timelines before the offer expires over time and the page actually expires and things like that. It was all th like third-party software we had to do in the past. And today, we don't have to do it anymore. Yes, right? today we are building it all in for you guys. <laughs> Yes, finally. Yes, you're able to do real urgency and scarcity across all of your funnels. So you're able to come in, put an offer on the opt-in for the webinar, and actually follow up in emails with countdown timer images in the emails that are the exact same thing that they saw on the other page and all consistent and close down the page for people based on IP addresses and everything. So it's, uh, it's an awesome feature. I can't wait for you guys to get your hands on. But you'll see here, basically, you can go in, you can create different countdown timer styles for emails. And I mentioned earlier the countdown timer element in the editor now has a new option where you can tie it to a countdown event. You just click that button, and now your countdown element in the editor is tied to the countdown event that you're actually setting up here during countdown funnels. So your countdown funnel setup looks something like this. Very basic. You go in, you, you say, I'm putting the countdown trigger on this page. If someone comes here, they're not registered yet. What happens? Do I register them? Do I redirect them somewhere? What happens if they're past their deadline and they were previously registered? What happens with them in that case? You set up all kinds of rules for this and create all kinds of urgency and scarcity around your funnels using countdown funnels. Cool. <clears throat> All right, and this one is insane. I had very little to do with actually building this one, so this is the, the opposite of the others. Uh, smart Checkout. The editor team has been working so hard on this for so long, going back and forth with Russell, going back and forth with the marketing team, with you guys, getting feedback, getting all the stuff. Um, in, in ClickFunnels Classic, we had this two-step checkout element that everyone loves, right? Like, it has been used by industry leaders. It has been used for a very long time by competitors that have... ClickFunnels clones, but they still use our ClickFunnels thing because <laughs> it works better. Um, so Smart Checkout is the real ultimate evolution of this checkout element. You're able to collect lead information on step one, trigger opt-in events inside of ClickFunnels 2.0. You're able to customize this to your heart's content. This element really is so much more than a two-step checkout. You're actually able to toggle the, toggle the modes. Maybe you want to present it as a one, one checkout form. Maybe you want to do tr three-step checkout. All of that's possible inside of this and more. So 
the other thing that you'll notice inside of it is it supports the dynamic rates and shipping zones I talked about earlier, which they show up beautiful like this. They load dynamically. Someone changes what's, what they're purchasing. These will update automatically, and they'll see the new rates for their selection. And we're introducing recognizing people when they return to your funnels, meaning if they have bought from you before in another funnel and they come to your funnel and type in their email address, they have the option of entering in a code that is text or emailed to them and actually restarting their entire session, right? So all their billing info, their credit cards, all the stuff brought right back in. This really, really simplifies the ability to make sales on returning customers. So we're super excited about this. Uh, one of the other things this enables you to do, which this is actually an industry first. No one's ever pulled this one off before, and we're working hard to, to work on it on a daily basis and get it ready for you guys. But you're able to actually upsell people inside of a funnel from previous purchases on recurring products. Now, let me explain how that kind of works, right? So if you come to ClickFunnels, and you buy the basic monthly plan, on the upsell page, I'm able to recognize that you bought the upsell or you bought the basic monthly plan and sell you the annual plan of the funnel hacker plan right there on the page. You can click upgrade and it immediately upgrades that subscription. You don't have to handle anything on the back end of, of doing anything custom. It just does it automatically. So for all of your courses, you're now able to easily do Ascension. Uh, for example, every year we do like annual offers at the end of the year often, right? And we want to send out these offers. It's always kind of confusing that you're, you're telling your customers you know, on other platforms, you're telling your customers, go ahead and, uh, you know, if you already are a customer, don't go to this funnel. You need to go log into your customer center, click account, click orders, click billing, find your subscription, click this, click this. How much friction did we just introduce into that process, right? It's ridiculous. Not anymore. Now we're going to text you that code, recognize you, sign you into your session, let you click buy inside of the same funnel that a new customer is able to purchase through. And that's a game changer, I think. All these different levels of continuity I've been showing you guys, like in the past, we moved some from one level to the next level. Someone external at customer support had logged in and canceled the recurring thing and make sure they got me. It was a nightmare. And now it all happens inside the, inside the order checkout. Yes, and so. it works for all of your courses. So, Anything recurring you're doing, Coffee of the Month Club in this example, right? They're able to update their subscriptions without having to talk to customer support or go get in the billing section or anything like that. Um, and let's see, what else we got here? Pre-done themes, order bump styles, unlimited customizations, all kinds of awesome stuff that you'll see inside of there. Um, uh, these are all of the best practices, all the styles that Russell's ever used that you've seen him do. We built those in for you automatically. Click a button, you have it, tweak it, make it look however you want. And that is Smart Checkout. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next up, Marketing AI Widget. This thing most of you guys probably already have access to, but I want to roll it out to everyone in the room today, make sure all of you have access to it. Uh, this is a very easy way that we've integrated uh, ChatGPT functionality inside of the editor. So you're able to interact with your elements, such as your headline in this example. I click the AI button, it pops up on the side, it gives me some prompts and some suggestions to make this headline better. I'm able to rewrite it, I'm able to update it, I'm able to make it a call to action. All these things can be done right here inside of this. I click a button, that headline gets pulled pushed into my page, and uh, we're going to be working over the next 12 months on this a ton. We have oh, such exciting stuff in progress for this, but right now, this is what you guys are going to have inside of your account. <laughs> this one, uh, this is a complete new one. This is a new <laughs> icon, so I'm super excited to reveal this to you guys today. We have now built community into all of your customer centers. <laughs> Russell and his team have been working hard on preparing our community for all of you guys, and you'll see it soon. But I want to walk you through the basics of it. So you have groups, topics, and posts. You're able to go in and create different groups. So you can say, when someone buys a certain course, they get access to this group in my community, or they get access to this specific topic inside of my community. They're able to post, comment, get notifications, all the things that you would expect to be able to do inside a community. And you have all kinds of ways to get them in there. You can give people access when they purchase products. You can give people access when a workflow step is triggered. We talked about other workflow steps. Here's two of them. Grant community access or remove community access. So if someone opts in, you can actually opt them into an area of your community. They'll get a welcome email. They click the link. Ta-da, they're signed in instantly. So that is how easy it is to set up. This is a quick example of how it looks. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Inside of your community, you'll see a dashboard. This is a basic group, a basic 
uh, index of all my groups in this scenario. You can set up groups to be uh, open, private, paid, secret. Like, there's all kinds of customizations around how you want to set up your community. We let you do anything you want when it comes to that. And uh, the amazing team on the community side is also working on very cool themes for you guys. Right now, you'll see that this is uh, basically our admin theme. So we're using our same themes for all of you guys. You have access to that immediately. And you have all kinds of cool stuff inside of the community that you can set up and play with, including moderation. Moderation is a key piece of this. And I wanted to touch on this because of how important it is to us in our business. We are going to give you full flexibility. Unlike, I know Zuckerberg's been getting bashed on quite a bit this week. I know we've all been, had our hearts broken by him at some point in time. Uh, but, but we give you all kinds of flexibility when it comes to your moderation. We're not, we're not forcing you to do it a certain way. You can shadow ban. You can add or you can remove. You can auto, you can auto approve. You can not. Uh, all kinds of cool flexibility around that, that the team's built in for you guys because that is super important. You'll notice here just a, a quick uh, animation of how easy it is to post. Post goes live. You'll see it right there. Uh, you can see a feed of all the other posts that have been happening. Uh, we're working on all kinds of cool updates around this as well. But right now, you'll see all of this inside of Community. And that's not all with community. We're also introducing today learning hubs. Learning hubs are a way that you can actually create very quick micro continuity sites right inside of your community without worrying about design, without worrying about the page editor, without worrying about anything complex. And then if you decide, you can click a button and turn it into an amazing, beautiful Russell Brunson course anytime <laughs> you want. Right? So this, is, this enables you to basically go and create a course. And I'll show you a couple of examples of it in action here. But you're able to create a course, create the, the type of course you want to do, create the modules, upload a video or two, and you have a course live. Supports mark complete, progress bars, uh, status indicators for all the different lessons, full course search, all the things that you would want from a course platform are automatically, oh, commenting as well, are automatically built in inside of Learning Hubs. And again, you can still at any point in time, if you decide you want to turn it into a full-blown custom ClickFunnels 2 course, then you can absolutely do that. And users will also see inside of here any custom courses that you've created if you would like. Again, we give you all kinds of customizations for this, so you can determine whether or not you show off your full courses here. Um, and you can also, if you'll notice in one of this, this uh, image in a second, you'll see that we also give you the ability to give a upgrade URL option. So when someone sees your course, you can set it to be a publicly viewable course, but still paid, meaning people will see it. And there's a link right there that says upgrade to join. They click upgrade to join. They go to your funnel because we want to actually sell them and market to them and teach them what they're paying for and what they're getting access to. So they go to your funnel, and they're able to purchase inside of your funnel and then be redirected right back here and have full access to your course. That's Learning Hubs. <clears throat> so this is all stuff we've been doing last year. This yeah. is the past 12 months. We've been working. We, we've been there. I mean, there's 400,000 lines of code. So there's been a couple of things that we've been working on in this. We're still out to the end of phase on. two. <laughs> yeah, we uh, we're still in phase two. Um, so I actually have one more thing here. So if yeah, all right. You know, what, I'm just going to drop into it. So this is Message Hub that I'm going to introduce you guys to now. This is a big one. We now have built-in SMS, email, support, Twitter, Facebook, Facebook Messenger, all the things you could possibly want. <laughs> I thought that might get a reaction. If you'll stand in. <laughs> Oh man, that's, that's a good reaction, awesome. So this is, this is an amazing feature the team's been working on integrating and it enables you to communicate with your customer any way you like, however you like. It ties into our workflows, right? So all those workflows that Andrew's been talking about, all the conditions, all the whatever you wanna do there, you actually are able to trigger messages through SMS, through email, through whatever, from your workflows and it ties into your calendar event appointments, which I was talking about a second ago. So you can absolutely say, okay, as soon as they book this appointment, send them this message, send them this SMS, wait two hours before the appointment, send them this SMS. You're able to do all that customization <laughs> that goes out through your new message hub inside of ClickFunnels 2.0. <laughs> Oh, 
Thanks for bearing with me on the time. I, I told you it'd be worth it, right? Uh, so Message Hub also has full analytics around support. So if you actually want to use this for your support team, it handles all of that for you guys. You're able to see open conversations, who's closed what, who's online, who's busy, like the C-Stack scores. You're able to do all of that inside of Message Hub. I uh, just want to run through a couple examples. We even have website widget support. So if you want to put a little pop-up support box or a notification that pushes into your user's page, you can do that inside of this. You can actually create a workflow step that says after they opt in but they don't buy this certain offer, send them a website notification and pop up a coupon code. All that is possible built into Message Hub inside of ClickFunnels 2.0. Awesome. <laughs> This is just an example of some of the conversations going on. I'm going to go ahead and run through it real quick. You're able to do all kinds of fun stuff. It supports macros. It supports actually AI Assist, which I might have a photo of, SMS channels with Twilio integration and bandwidth integration. Uh, it supports dialogue flow, actually. So we're able to do dialogue flow integrations more nerdy, complex, but you're able to create whatever custom AI bots you want behind the scenes that can hold the conversations with your customers. You can build those over in Google's dialog flow, and it integrates in here. So we're giving you access, like as Andrew said, opening things up where you can do anything you want, not holding you in. Has Slack integrations, so you get notified in Slack of new things. Uh, there's the workflow step and what it looks like. Send chat message, you'll see that in your workflows. You click send chat message, you click the inbox that you want it to go from, and you set up your message. Do you want it to be an SMS inbox, an email, a web, uh, website notification? Whatever you want, you can set that up inside of there. Um, and then here is just a quick conversation going on. You'll see that there's actually an AI integration as well. So if you want AI to write the reply for you, draft the reply for you. I'd recommend reading it before you send it, but it'll draft the reply for you, and you can tweak it real quick and send the message to your users right there inside of Message Hub. That's Message Hub. So cool. Whew. So on that big timeline, that goes through phase one, phase two, and that brings us to today. Real quick, I want to point out phase three. We're not done. We're not <laughs> remotely done. We're in the middle of all kinds of amazing, exciting stuff. I definitely don't have time to go through phase three with, three with you guys right now. But suffice it to say, we're going to be focused a lot on the user experience, making things easier for you guys, making things simpler, embedding it with Russell's training as much as possible, and actually automating a lot of things with AI for you guys behind the scenes more so than um, out in front. So you're going to see all kinds of insane improvements coming up. Uh, over the next 12 months before Funnel Hacking Live 9.5. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so that is phase two. Whew. All right. There's the timeline right there. <laughs> <laughs>